Hello and welcome to Eat Your Backyard, my YouTube channel where I talk about all kinds of edible things, as well as all kinds of tropical beautiful things, like these crotons you see in the back. So we have a nice combination and I continue to add to the food forest. This is the Saturday morning live stream. I've acquired a few things and I thought I would use your help to decide where to put them in the food forest. Isn't it cool how the wood ages here? In my location, it ages so quickly. So this has got black mold on it, mildew, whatever. Um, this wooden uh, door has been here about maybe 10 years. So you can see how incredibly fast things age especially beachside where the salt also joins the the party of destruction change maybe a better way to look at it look at these beauties look at these beauties now these are just things i'm growing from cuttings but uh these are cavendish dwarf cavendish bananas they are beautiful each one of these pots i covered them in the live stream last night but each one of these pots has several healthy pups you can see Paid a little more for these than I would have liked, but still reasonable. It's $14 due to the multiple strong pups in each one of these pots. I thought it was worth it. Got them at Lowe's. I'm not affiliated with Lowe's other than it's one of the many places I go look for deals. You know, sometimes you find them, I would claim you know, probably a more realistic nursery option for most people just because you might not have you know, some great nursery right in your location, but that's always a good excuse to go for a road trip, in my estimation. Bring the tarp and a reckless attitude and you might spend $200 on fruit trees like me. All right. Well, I guess it's not reckless. After all, we're just adding abundance and productivity to our life and increasing our our health. So to me, this is, as Alan Watts would say, the golden goodie. Now, you can carry a banana tree like this. If it's got health root system, you should be able to do this. Just grab it at the base of the tree. You can see there's no movement there. It's rock solid. That's nice and uh, locked in there with those roots. I think what I'm going to do is, you see, I've been adding this whole corner now for the last year or so. If you look back on the videos, you can see the progression here. But uh, we're really exemplifying a few very excellent permaculture. I'll put this in, uh, in the shot. Uh, some excellent permaculture concepts here. One is utilizing the edge space. This was a barren edge space, and now it is a thriving area. The other one is produce a yield. This area is going to now produce a yield in a number of ways. You know, you can start to enumerate the things that you see here, like the sugar cane and the banana varieties and the roselli and et cetera, but so many things. Now vertical pineapple production. But as I stated in my video that I released last night about how to add a banana system, food producing system to your yard, by the way, go check that out if you are interested that it's important to have many bananas, to plant many, always plant many, because you want to have a consistent harvest, you're going to have to have many. It doesn't really take that much space if you get the smaller varieties, but this being a musa, these being, well, apple, I think that's Orinoco, we've got musa behind it, and then we've got the Cavendish around the back. Southern exposure, I wanna keep that open so that the sun can still come in. So I think what I'm gonna do is add this back into that space right here. You can see these are two that I purchased earlier and planted earlier this week. One there and one there. I thought maybe I would just put the, the third right in between. Now the roselli behind it definitely be impacted by that decision. You can see this beautiful roselli I grew from seeds. We'll be doing a video all about growing these very soon. Stay tuned. Florida Cranberry. 
I have uh, been eating those. It's looking a little sparse now. I've been eating so many of them. Love it. But um, yeah, I don't mean for this to dominate any particular area and I wanna play Roselli's all throughout and get into really figuring out how to grow them in and amongst many other things. So I think this would fill in that space rather nicely. Be interested to know what you think, but I think I'll put a third one in there. They're about two feet apart in that scheme and that gives them enough, enough uh, space to spread out. You can see this one back here. That's about the maximum height that they'll get. So they'll grow up. I've got this Montingia tree, this protection system from the salt spray, since I'm so close to the ocean here in Florida. Zone 10A. But I think that's gonna fill that area in nicely. Now this particular area I've been using as a workspace. Uh, what I've got up in this area is a combination of rabbit manure, chicken bedding and manure, and sand from my yard, soil from my yard, just kind of sitting there and composting. Hopefully the worms are in it, kind of transforming it. But I could get rid of that and also put the other one right here. The only reason I'd hesitate to place the other banana tree here is because it is a little bit sheltered from the, the main sun, whereas this area is going to get full, full blast of sun, this area a little less. Now, light management in a small space is so important. You know, I'm always talking about it just because I'm always trying to figure it out. It's one of the cool things about gardening, in my opinion, is the management of all these factors. Now, hopefully this shows up well. This is a longan tree relative of the lychee. Great tree, too big, too tall. Uh, it's got, you see this, this area right here, this, this whole branch is, although it does serve a sort of sort of uh, salt spray break, it, it's probably too big. Hey, camel. But I'm I, really, the jury's not out. And I, I always ponder these things, you know, what's the best next step? What's the best next step? And thinking of the form and function, because once I remove something this large, that's taking this much time to remove, I, you know, I can't put it back easily. So as I talk through it, you know, I'm adjusting my position here. I think what I'll do is I'll just take off these two and leave this wall here so it serves as that block from the east wind. And these aren't giant trees, so I'm not worried about it really getting up and going towards those power lines. It's really going to be easy to manage. And then remove this part, which is, hey, organic grow. Hi, welcome aboard. I'm stoked you're here. Uh, these two which link into a much larger branch you can see here. I could probably just remove this branch right here, right about there, and remove a lot of the shade production that's happening here. And then, you know, long way to get to the idea that how do I ensure more light for this thing? Well, once the sun gets over to this direction, that light will be able to come in so it'll get more total hours of, of sun time, which is exactly what bananas need to be successful. If you want a banana to do well, Cavendish or others, provide it with full sun to the maximum extent possible. They love it as long as they are watered. But once they're established, they can do okay even in some light rain uh, times. Uh, these bananas in the back here, this is a very dry area. I've actually got a sprinkler head spot buried under here somewhere but it'd be something like archaeology to find it at this point hey gerald franz good to see you welcome aboard good morning happy saturday but they'll establish the roots and uh, actually be able to grow through it but when they're young not so much so uh, this one had the benefit of lots of attentive watering uh, however if you want to see an example of one i didn't do that with well this is what can happen. They just kind of retreat into that small diminished state and don't grow that much. They can still survive once they get some water, they'll shoot back up, but that's kind of what happened there. And you just gotta keep watering those bananas until they get established is the main point here. And uh, having three healthy banana 
plants here is going to really be excellent and give me gratification pretty soon. You know, it takes over a year for the bananas to actually fruit, but that is why I say I am a huge advocate of plant many. Plant many. Find a good deal. Look around. When you find the good deal, buy many. Plant many. Then harvest many. It just makes a lot of sense. For some reason, it took me a long time to learn that very simple truth of gardening, which is that, you know, for instance, if you're growing bananas or if you're growing dragon fruit, that's another good example. Some of these fruit, which take longer to fruit, don't produce a huge amount of fruit per thing, you know, or whatever, long duration between fruiting. One of the keys is plant many of them. And then you increase the odds you're going to get to a point where you are year-round harvesting. So you can go from a situation where, oh, you know, occasionally on a blue moon, I get a banana production to, oh yeah, I've got three on the trees right now. And that, and that to always be the case. That's where I want to be. Uh-oh. All right, I'm back. It was weird. My gimbal kind of turned off or I pressed the button that turned it off. Anyway. Yeah, so you want to have the situation where you're getting the bananas year round if you're of my mindset. And uh, that's what I've got. I I've been showing this lately. That's just because this is what's blooming now. But, you know, my dwarf and large banana scheme setup has come to fruition. I realized the dream. I even got video of a hen dropping an egg in the coop yesterday. That's how synchronized I feel. I, that was amazing, by the way. I'll send that, put that video up on the channel. It's making a, a cool intro and I'll be darned, out it came. Beautiful brown egg. But yeah, so I have the Musa up high, banana, and then the Cavendish down low. And these are actually great producers of bananas. This is the Cavendish that is, and the Musa, but Cavendish. Well, that was me again <laughs> on the gimbal. <laughs> it's like a roller coaster ride on the shot. Uh, now I see what I did to turn it on, make it turn off. But yeah, that, this is a sub standard harvest quantity for these Musa. The reason that it's occurring like this, you know, not that many hands of bananas is because it is, it is, uh, the first banana from a pup. It's the pup that I planted. And I found that, you know, when I do that, I, I plant the pups. Sometimes there's a larger cutting, especially the larger cuttings seem to not produce a vigorous grow. And the, the result is, you know, I don't expect some of these bananas fall off. They don't set. I don't expect the, the harvest to be huge from the first shot of the plant. I, I never do expect that. And that's the same with sugarcane. Sugarcane is very much like that too. You have initially some kind of weak growth. Uh, it's establishing its root mass under the surface, establishing the energy it needs to really go off. And then it will start to send out really stout and robust uh, canes to the point where you get this. You know, big, reliable, huge span between nodes, all that good stuff, all the things you'd expect to see in full grown, super healthy sugarcane, or in this case, bananas. So unlike that first pup growth, this one is happening from a second shoot. So the point is it's already going from the energy it's stored under the, under the ground, that starch, that's all kinds of things that are down in that root ball. And and uh, yeah, that'll mean that the additional plants which come out of here are going to have much higher likelihood to give you good fruit. So again, another reason why you just are going to benefit by just getting in the flow of what bananas do and just letting that happen. Uh, I doubt in nature if you'd ever just see one banana tree standing alone. So if that's the situation you produced in your yard, well, there is more of a Zen art to this thing, as Gerald would point out. Maybe time to embrace the full banana-isms of the world. Make a banana grove. I, I have done this now several times in different areas of my yard, move them around. They're one of the most easy to transplant, easy to move things ever. I'm on a banana phase here, you know, because I'm a banana-fying to an even deeper depth, everything. 
but I love them. And you know, they ha have a high tradeability factor too. Just because the quality of the fruit is absolutely fantastic. I mean, next level delicious. Uh, so they're nothing like the grocery store bananas. So yeah, definitely one there. And again, I just don't know where to put this, this next banana, although somehow I knew I needed to have it. <laughs> you know that feeling. I don't know how this fits in exactly. I just know for sure it fits in. And look at this thing, man. You, you know, you can't. This one's got two pups. It's got a he real healthy pup here and another real healthy pup here. I mean, geez, this looks like a mini big plant. It's so healthy. So take this one. I bought a, finally, I bought a little cart, one of those little gorilla carts. I injured my back years ago, so like the concept of hauling bags of stuff back into the yard, like wood chips, I have to still get some wood chips externally. All right, let's see. Nice, nice. Yeah, I'd say we we could farm for pups too, right? We can just grow pups. Like I've got areas in my yard where I've just grown. Um, I'm growing bananas, not for the point of getting the banana uh, fruit. It's just to grow the pups. Yeah, you see how that fills it in? Now we're starting to reproduce the, the jungle vibe. I would say. What do you think? That, yeah. Just something about having all those bananas just all groved in there together, you can easily imagine, I would claim, if you are capable of thinking in pictures, like this beautiful structure, just continuing all the way down here. Now those, let's look at, thank you. Thanks, Blacks, Tropical Homestead, I appreciate it. Yeah, um, yeah. And I, I'm envisioning what it's going to look like when they get up to the same height as this, you know, throughout. This Montingia tree will be much taller by then. This Barbados, no, this isn't Barbados, this is Suriname cherry. I can continue to just keep it as a wall, more or less, with a little bit of high overdroop. And then I've got an ever-bearing mulberry back here. That's, again, just a shielding and forage tree. We use, we use these trees like this just as a as a crop tree, so I'm constantly harvesting the branches and feeding it to the animals. The chickens love it. The rabbits love it. So anyway, I, I think that's a winner. That's a winner all day. And it just continues, excuse me, it continues the, and I do feel like, in a way, a Bob Ross, I feel almost like Bob Ross, uh, combined with Mr. Rogers and then maybe Alan Watts or uh, Emerson. Yeah, that would be a good one. Or maybe Marcus Aurelius. Who knows? But I want to have this whole area look like a tropical banana forest with lots of cool little things to discover as you go by. And I think we've achieved that. And I think this is going to be a huge producer it's got all the elements that it takes to make bananas successful. Sun, water, loose soil, nutrients being both macro and micro. Macro being our animal component, the bunnies, nothing better. And the vermiculture, getting that soil rocking. And then the micronutrients, of course, been using a supplement, kind of that granular that I get. Don't like doing that converting over to biochar. We're gonna burn the branches. Now, as I harvest these branches, like from that longan tree I was just talking about, as I harvest those branches, we stack them up. Well, we use the leaves back in the chicken pen and in the compost bins. We use the branches in the burn pit, and then we return those ashes around the trees containing lots of micronutrients. So you're giving those bananas all that stuff, they're gonna do well. The only thing that, you know, I continue to think, I'm, I've uh, always got this kind of thing on my mind this time of year, like, I hope a big wind event doesn't occur. You know, the worst case is like some kind of 
hurricane that comes goes over us or or is near this area, but or tropical storm or whatever, that would be a bummer. But you know that can always happen. But that's the that's the deal, you know. That's part of the environment here. But yeah, I'm very I'm just beholding. And I am pleased, purposefully leaving this hole, this southern uh, hole for the energy to return in. All right, let's look at the other things. And <laughs> I, I am running out of room, you know, but the only way you can do this kind of stuff, I think, in any way that makes sense is to keep up on the trimming, management, forest management, there it is, the Cherimoya. Look at the health of this thing. Can you believe I got this at, where was it? I believe it was Lowe's. It was either Lowe's or Walmart, $40. I can't remember. Went to many of them is the reason why. I, I uh, shopped around. Now this one, I would definitely not grab by the base of the trunk. It's not that type of thing definitely not strong enough but this has got all the signs of a you know I figured for forty dollars this size it was well worth it but it's got all the size all the signs of a tree that's going to do well vigorous growth characteristic right off the bat you know the thing I'm always worried about is the salt what is I'm gonna try to do this one-handed okay what is the effect of the salt going to be on these leaves? Now, I could try to minimize that by just not planting in a place that it likely gets a lot of salt. Hmm. Now, the size. 15 feet by 10 feet. So, not a big tree. And that's one of the reasons it's so desirable. Now, you know these banana leaves are just going to continue to get more and more of a, a factor here on so I don't know if I want to plant it that close. I may end up putting it down closer to the chicken coop. And observe that the grass is not growing under here. It's very, this actually serves the whole forest and I don't sweat it one bit. Hmm, that's a lime tree. Okay, this is a tricky area. This is the puzzle. Oh, by the way, we, I think we need to just put the hens out, but. Yeah, this is a tricky area. I've grown things in here which I knew would struggle and, and some experimental things. So like this soursop now starting to, I think, get a root structure on it and, and uh, take off. You know, this is the before my yard stuff and then hopefully this is gonna be the after it's in my yard stuff, but it's going through transition. The, the fig tree I planted here, the generi fig is doing what it does this time of year. I'm not sweating it, but it's just establishing its roots. Don't expect it to do much. This is a fruit tree quite frankly expected it to be dead by now so the fact that it's alive super stoked valencia oranges maybe but you know there's just so many bugs if i if i look through here you know you're going to be able to start to see all the little i mean every bug wants to just do this to every leaf so yeah soursops i'm going for it i'm going for it but now the soursop is getting saltiness on it which well, we'll see. I think in this protected, and again, this is why I have this wall of Dracaena here. It's to block that salt influence. It's kind of in a little protected garden of EB. But this is a key for lime. Recently attached it to one of these awesome fiberglass poles you can get at the store Miracle Grow fiberglass poles, but just tied it on with a little cellophane grafting tape. And uh, it, it should do very well. Actually, that's the one I expect to do best and it's really not impressed me that much, but that one I'm gonna hope to train up and out, get some limes. Yeah, the soursop leaves for tea. That's a great idea. I'm, in fact, Blacks, that's one of the major things I wanna start to do here over the next couple of months is also start to experiment with teas, different types of tea. And many of the leaves actually, I, I love the, that you brought that point up. That's so cool because the, the bounty, the production, the yield of what you're getting from your yard, I've now learned is far beyond the fruit. 
right? The veg, the veg of the tree, so to speak, the leaves of the tree are worth a lot and sometimes contain incredible nutrients and are really good. I think the soursop is definitely in that category. If you smell the leaves, you can even kind of smell it, a lot of these leaves. Uh, there's others that are used, like in Jamaica, they use the this uh, Montingia tree widely for smoking, the wood for smoking meats, and it's incredibly aromatic. Like if you smell this, mm, it smells so good. I mean, it smells sweet and wonderful. So this is another one. I think it would be excellent in a tea as well. And you could just eat it, you know, but it's sticky. It's sticky like it's got sugar on the outside of it. So incredible. And sometimes you just eat the shoot. You know, that's what I do with the mulberry, another good one. Another great one for tea, for full of nutrients, certainly. Uh, another really good one is, is this Barbe uh, sorry, Suriname cherry. These have a delicious, sweet, if you take these leaves off and just kind of crumple them up in your hand and smell your hand, you can smell the, the whole uh, like fruity tart, uh, it's so cool. Uh, and several others. So, I mean, I think the getting the leaves in the game are pretty cool. And you could even add things which you know are, are medicinal in nature if you, if you have a need for them, like uh, papaya leaf. Papaya leaf is actually sold in these uh, health stores where they sell all the different natural homeopathic remedies and stuff. So a lot of this stuff is actually sold as cures. You just have to kind of know what it's good for. But we're gonna see on this cherimoya. Here we go, custard apple 2021, not stopping. Until, uh, until the casket's dropping is the, really the motto here because I don't know what's gonna happen with this, but all I know is if I'm not willing to be a fool before, uh, if I'm not willing to be a fool, I'm never gonna get to be the sage. So I better just start getting to it and getting it in the ground. I think I'll probably plant it right, right in this area just because I feel so good about it. You know, there's an element of hope, hope, all right, let's let the chickens out. You know, I hear them squawking and they're saying, come on, really? A live stream more important than us? The little Henny Miracle Makers. They made me five eggs yesterday. Us, five eggs. Five eggs. Oh, you guys look like you are ready to get out. First one out, Blondie. Then, oh, Ponzi, then Sally, then Chicken Joe. All right. And the funny thing is they used to not push the door open, but now they get so eager. They'll probably push it open. I don't want to teach them to push it open, but I want to just let them free. Chickies. Hey, chickies. Yep, they look like they're in good spirits. This is a really cool setup I've got going here now. You see, I just took this chicken, I mean, this uh, banana out, just dug it up. I need to, need to move that today. They'll actually tolerate some letting them lay on the ground. I'm gonna move this also over to that banana area. This being a musa though, it's a big boy. I gotta be careful where I plant it. Banana decisions, you know, they're, you, you gotta think about these things. Fools rush in. Well, I think about them at least. All right, so I'll grab that one here after the live stream. Got a volleyball game, my daughter's volleyball game. I've got to pause for, really looking forward to that. I love the volleyball games. Well, nothing but golf balls. That's okay, that's okay. I'll do a quick check for cleanliness in the coop. Looking for any manure. I've been putting in thicker layer of bedding. I see a little, yeah, any visible stuff that I see on the surface, I go in with a little hand shovel and just get rid of that so that uh, it, it maintains top cleanliness. But I'll tell you the method that I used, and I'm gonna do a video on this in case you're thinking of getting chickens, maybe it'll be helpful, but the method that I used to get 
the chickens adapted to living in the coop and then laying eggs in their nesting box without dropping any manure in those nesting boxes, which is absolutely what you want. Uh, that whole thing happened wonderfully and those golf balls were part of it. I might as well check to see. I haven't really checked to see what these, I built this little system here for feeding them their supplements once they started to dry eggs, uh, drop eggs. It doesn't really look like this one's going down. They haven't been eating much of this oyster shell, which is unexpected. And I halfway wonder if it's because it's too big. So we're gonna keep an eye on that. In terms of the grit, oh yeah. The grit has gone down to about almost half gone. So they're, they're eating the grit, but they're not really pecking too much at the oyster shell. Maybe that's just because they don't need it. Oh, sweet little fluffy butt. The chicken's butt is about the fluffiest thing there is. You can see how gentle and wonderful these birds are. They'll start laying eggs here. And within the next hour, likely, we'll hear the, the Cackle Fest 2021 start, perhaps a little bit. One disadvantage of how this new setup we have is that, is that the Birds now have access to the, all these walkways, so of course they're always putting manure all over it, which is not optimal. So I haven't figured that out yet. It's like always one change is just the pathway to the next as I continue to evolve the system. Uh, you can see I've got these these uh, posts. You know they're very easy to stick in and into the ground without much effort, and put temporary fence on or fence like this. This is my favorite kind of fence, by the way, for these adult chickens. They can still get their head through or whatever, but it's uh, covered coated, so it's not going to rust as fast. I, I, I just like it the most. It's pretty inexpensive, too. Uh, I decided this morning when I was watching an Edible Acres video that I love that guy's channel. He has such cool chicken techniques. Um, they grow, they were growing uh, billet. It's, 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 wow, what's the name of the grain? I can't remember the name of the grain they grew, but it was like a, a type of grain. And then they also grew sunflowers on this plot of property along with corn and some other things. But it made me think, hey, I could absolutely grow sunflower patches on friends' property if they were into it. And they could have you know some of the sunflowers. I can have some of them and uh, easily start getting that type of seed input into this backyard. So, you know, so I can grow sunflowers in my backyard. I really don't have the capacity to grow that many, but if I had a place where I could grow like 500 sunflowers, it would really be worth it. And it would really be a significant uh, help to feeding the chickens and everything. That would be fun to do. They're so easy to grow. I could grow different varieties. So maybe I'll do that. I've got a friend who's getting ready to purchase some land out in an agricultural zone. Maybe I'll ask him if I can do a little sunflower experiment, you know? I think we're gonna be getting him set up with chickens also, but these chickens got the life. You know, the sea breezes, fall, morning in Florida. They love to forage for the, the bugs. This is their pasture time during the day. Which is very good for them. So yeah, that that's the, the spot now, I think, for this tree. I'm gonna give it a little bit. What we don't wanna do is block the passing route here because we use this for throwing the football. So this is really the only place I care about having nice green grass. And by grass, I mean whatever green thing grows there. That doesn't have thorns on it. All right. The two Osage Osagi, I don't know what they're, how it's pronounced, but these two blackberries, again, buy many. Should have bought more. Might go back and buy more. It's on the $5 rack, folks. I need a sunny place for this too. Now these present a real cool aspect, which is that they're gonna stay low. So maybe. Maybe I could put them right here. 
because I'm wondering if I don't really know the growth habit of these blackberries, these particular blackberries, but they look bushy. They look like bushy and not so much just runners. So maybe if I plant them here, I could train them up against this area and have a pickable, easy thing that gets the exposure and doesn't threaten these over the line. So that's what I was kind of thinking for these. But what's missing? You know, the third and the fourth one are missing. That's there should be four here. Obviously, there should be four. They were five dollars. What was I thinking? What was I thinking? Missed it. Eh, so I'll go back and get a couple more, or maybe put in a couple, find a couple more, and put a couple different varieties in here. Get another variety and, and intermix them, so that we'll see which ones do better. Maybe even get some cross pollination going on. All right, so thank you for joining me. I hope you will uh, join me tomorrow. I'm going to do my Sunday morning coffee chat. I think sometimes I do the walk and talk uh, video. I might do that. We'll see. But today we're going to be jumping into that wild ocean. We have a Category 4 hurricane that just passed by Florida out in the middle, out in the ocean. Far enough out that we're not feeling anything from it other than the waves. So the big waves are going to be coming in. 16-second period. We're going to go swimming in the shore pound. Wash up and down the beach like... Uh, Yeah, the waves are pumping, right? I'll even bring the, I'll bring the shortboard down, see if I can't get it on that high tide slammage, maybe get a couple scary drops and uh, something like that. We'll see, we'll see. But if nothing else, Jack and I are gonna be swimming in it like nuts. I mean, we could just swim in that shore pound for hours, get washed up and down the beach by those waves. I hope you have a great day. I hope you get into some of this permaculture stuff in your life. I'll tell you, it sure has been a positive effect in mine. Not just the mangoes. I mean, look at the chicken wagging his tail like that. But I can tell you everybody's drawn to it. Nice. Oh, you're down in Melbourne Beach an hour ago. Excellent. Excellent. Representing Irie Tropicals. Yeah, leave a comment in the thing. That way we can uh, continue to move forward in unison. <laughs> Not in unison. I appreciate it. Thanks for the compliment on the stream. Yeah, leave comments, etc. We want to keep it going. Maybe we'll even uh, start to trade some cuttings and seeds. I want to start getting into that too. So thanks. Have a great day. Get out there.